for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that day you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts at, at Meribah. As in the day of Masha, in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. For I am gracious and merciful. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Amen. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and a house will fall against house. And if Satan is driven against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by the Beelzebub that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your own people drive them out. Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks, and overcomes him. He takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to ask you, those of you that were here for the first reading, and if you weren't, shame on you, by the way. Uh, for the first reading, I'd like to ask you to consider uh, one of the more uh, difficult problems. <coughs> A first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah is a difficult prophet. He's difficult because his, his prophecy from the Lord does not tickle our ears and make us feel good about ourselves. And that's a good thing. Because Jeremiah does not tell us what we want to hear. He tells us what we need to hear. And often we don't like that, especially today. We want those who tickle our ears and puff us up and make us feel good about ourselves. 
Well, there's a lot of things about ourselves that we ought not to feel good about, frankly. And Jeremiah has a stern warning, I think. You consider it for the United States. Stern warning for America. <coughs> they will listen neither to you, and when you call on them, they will not answer. To the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord God, or take a correction, faithfulness has disappeared and the word itself is banished from their speech. And what does that mean? It means that the word of the prophet is not simply for an individual. It's for a people. It's for a nation. And what specifically I'm talking about is this movement in the United States. This is not politics, so please don't tell me about that and don't start that because it's not going to work well. Believe me. So don't come back there and tell me that because believe me, you're going to need an ambulance or I would, so one of us is, maybe both. It's very simple. We have in this country in a month or so, month and a half, we have crossed the line. See, we've crossed the line. And the line we've crossed is that we continually talk about fetuses. Fetuses. You mean unborn human beings? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, that's a choice. That's, that's a, a, a reproductive right. I'd like to know if somebody could please explain it to me. And don't do it. Uh, how the killing of an unborn child is a reproductive right. What are you reproducing? You're not reproducing anything. It's, it, 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 it's ridiculous on its face if you pay any attention to words but I realize words don't mean anything anymore can you all find a seat please in the back sit down do something because it's uh, not working for me uh, and uh, what we have uh, and, and, and there's debate about oh it's a, uh, it's a reproductive right. There is no reproduction. It's the right you're claiming to kill an unborn child. That's what you're saying. But now we have crossed the Rubicon. We have crossed into a whole new area in this country. And that is, we have crossed into infanticide. We are killing born children. I worked in a hospital for 30 years. I've taught in medical school and in law schools. And many of the OBGYN doctors that I spoke to, that once the child is in the birth canal, that child is born. That child is considered born. No. No, no. We want to say no. No, no. And in the name of these rights and choices and all of this sort of stuff, we have now entered into the phase of killing actually born children. Because many OBGYN doctors have told me that they consider 
and, bi and biologically and medically, when that child enters the birth ca canal, that child is born. And we have agreed in several states that that's okay. And you got this guy in New York, this Cuomo guy, who claims to be a Catholic. Well, my question is, where, where is Dolan? Where, where is the, the card go, the, the pointy hat archbishop? Where, where is he speaking out about this? He's got laryngitis, he can speak out about everything else. Table grapes and letters and everything else. Where, where is that? It, it, it's an absolute, it's a disgrace. I'm sorry, it's a disgrace. Uh, how, whatever you think about pro-choice, whatever that means, and all of this kind of stuff, how do you condone moral, and especially as a Catholic, the taking of newborn life. I don't know. I don't know. And that's okay. Wow. Well, the nation that does not listen to the words, to the voice of the Lord, it's God, or take correction. Pope John Paul wrote a magnificent encyclical, Evangelium Vitae, the Gospel of Life, and talked about the fact that there are two cultures at work today. There, there are a clash of cultures. One is the culture of death, and it also has to do with old people, I being among them. Many of you have expressed the idea of bumping me off, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't blame you. I may, I may help you in the process. Uh, and uh, the people who are in sick beds, the elderly, yes, there are limits to our curing, but there should not be limits to our caring. We should care in all forms. Care. It doesn't mean every treatment. It doesn't mean extraordinary measures, as Pope Pius XII indicated. It doesn't mean that. But we must always care for the sick, for those who are not capable of taking care of themselves. We don't abandon them. We don't kill them. We don't give them lethal injections and all of this sort of stuff in the name of compassionate care, like in Oregon. Compassionate care. G.K. Chesterton said, you know, in the beginning, we will kill people because they are a burden to themselves. But in time, we will kill them because they are a burden to us. Is that really the kind of society and culture that we want? And then there's the civilization of life and love. It's the civilization of Evangelium Vitae the gospel of life. We reverence life in all its forms, whether we think it, 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 it's worthy or this or that. Every life is worthy of life. And when we get to the point where we think that there's life that's not worthy of life, and that's what we've done, my question to you is this. How long do you think, I have no idea of myself, God's wrath is going to be withheld against our society? We cannot continue to do this stuff.
and we are looking. And how long will God's wrath, faithfulness has disappeared, the word itself is banished from their speech. My Lord, my Lord, where the Catholic Church and that's why you have to have the courage, and I'm going to end on this, so just take it easy. Uh, the Catholic Church has been the consistent sole voice around the world on behalf of the defense of life. And that's something that you should participate in and be proud of and be thankful of. That your church has spoken on behalf of life in all its forms. And I, I, I just wonder, you know, I, I, I do. How long is God's wrath going to be held back as we continue to do these things against life? I don't know. I know his mercy is long, but so is his justice. And the taking of innocent human life, especially at this stage now, either in the sickbed or in the birth canal, God is not indifferent to that. God is not indifferent to that. And so we ask for, during the season of Lent, a conversion, not, not merely of ourselves, but a conversion of the soul of the nation, and that those so-called leaders, if that's what you want to call them, so-called leaders, that they indeed will be converted and turn to the protection of human life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Uh, let us pray for our religious leaders that they may be men and women outstanding in faith and truly care for those entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our government and civic leaders, that they may be men and women, outstanding in virtue, may work for the common good, be ever mindful of the poor, and always promote the dignity and the sacredness of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our relatives and friends who are sick, in mind, body, and spirit, that Jesus, the divine physician, may touch them with his grace and bring them strength and healing. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all of our relatives and friends who, are, <clears throat> who have died, that they indeed may be received into the body of Christ uh, in heaven. And we pray on this uh, day for Mary and Henry Rodish, Dan Wilson, Madge Allison. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts, you know what we need. Help us each day to truly honor you and to walk in your ways and to repent of our sinfulness. We pray this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We have plenty of seats. We're getting ready to go into the consecration. I ask you please to find a seat so that you can worthily honor the Lord, especially during the consecration. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 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 Lord. What shall people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, and that these gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling false joys, for your promise is the reward of your truth. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and also to imitate you in your kindness to us. And so our voices blend with all the choirs of our angels, angels, and saints as we pray. Holy, 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 holy. Sending down your spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith, who proclaim the death of the Lord and confess the resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, here, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, O Lord. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout <coughs> the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life <coughs> and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Let us pray. We call on your loving kindness and trust in your mercy, O Lord, that since we have from you all that we are, through your grace we may seek what is right and have strength to do the good we desire. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord, the Lord is and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit descend upon us and remain forever. Amen. Our celebration of this Eucharist is ended. It is also begun. Let us go forth now to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.